Mirko Mormele, welcome to Let's Talk. Mm -hmm. You are the mystery man of Brooklyn right now. Seems like it, seems like it. I'm with Mirko all the time. He's my right-hand man. We now work together. He is a part of this project. And everybody just sees this guy and they're like, who is he? We are going to be discussing some serious things on this episode. A lot of things that people do not know about Mirko and I. And let's get into it. Who are you, Mirko? I had the pleasure of being Francesco's best friend for many years of our lives. Mm -hmm. First met him in fourth grade. We were very, very similar. We had a lot of common interests. And we really kind of, from when we first met, we kind of just hit it off and ended up having this really close, unbreakable bond. Mm. So you were Francesco's best friend, right-hand man. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your first encounter with him when you guys first locked eyes? There's a bunch of different encounters for sure. Okay. I'd say the first one that I remember was, well, we went to the same elementary school together. Okay. My school that I first went to closed down. I ended up transferring to the school that he went to, and we were put into the same class together. Okay. And the first real interaction I remember with him was at the lunch table. I was the new kid at the school. I really didn't have a lot of friends. I was kind of a shy kid. I had mm. a hard time talking to people. And I remember he came up to me. He saw that I had Italian cold cuts in my sandwich. I'm not mm. sure how he saw it, but um, <laughs> he comes up to me and he's like, hey, is that is that mortadella? And I'm like, wow. yeah, it is. Well, mortadella was my favorite cold cut. Right. So, and I found out he really liked Mortadella to himself. So I'm like, yeah, it is. And he's like, well, you know, I got ham in my sandwich, but how about we trade? You know, honestly, I think he got the better wow. end of the trade. Wow. For sure. But look, I was just trying to make friends. And I was like, hey, this guy seems pretty cool. So, you know, he was sitting at the table by himself as well. And we started to talk from there. I remember we did some projects together. You know, I went to his birthday party. Mm. It was a few different interactions, but that's definitely the, the first one that stands out. My understanding is you are the reason he got through school, huh? You got conned into doing his homework. Can I have some more context? I don't know if conned is really the word. Okay. Uh, I really don't, you know, I, I, was, I was down to help him with the homework. You know, okay. he, listen. Well, what he, was the trade? There was a trade off. All right. So his, uh -huh. his school homework, it wasn't really his uh, forte. It wasn't his strong suit. Okay. Um, so I was definitely more the school book smart. He was more of the going out social person and pretty much the trade off was kind of like, Hey, listen, we both got the same homework to do. It's easy for you to do. Not so easy for me. And he's like, look, the quicker that we get the homework done, this quicker we can, you know, play <laughs> some, play some, you know, call of duty zombies. We play a lot of video games <laughs> or we'd go out, get, he'd get on his skateboard. I get on my scooter. Cause I was a little scared to, to get on the skateboard yeah. at first. And we just go everywhere. We'd go skating down 18th Avenue, go down to Diker, go to different parks, meet up with different people. And mm. listen, I was just so happy to be able to have that like adventure mm. with him. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hey, listen. He was an adventurous guy. Do what you, I'll do what I got to do to get us out of here. So yeah. the homework got done and Kay. we'd go on our ways. Not only did you get conned, I think you got conned, even after hearing that story, into doing his homework, but you were also at... My first date with him. You were the third wheel. I was, I was. And I want you to know, on my end, you were not invited. I had no idea oh, you I were could tell. coming. <laughs> I could tell. I could tell that was the case. I want to know, honestly, like, how did that work out? How were you on this third? This, How were you the third wheel? I want to know. Pretty much anywhere that he went. Okay. Once we had this really close bond, at a certain point, We'd go everywhere together. So if that meant, you know, to hang out with friends, if that meant, you know, on a date with him uh. and I was the third wheel, <laughs> you know, I was there. And I think okay. that there was a, there was two sides of it. I think for him, mm. he definitely felt more comfortable having me there. He felt more himself. Like mm. he, could, he could open up to whoever he was meeting for, for the first time a lot easier that way. And for me, like, I wouldn't have really been able to get out my bubble without him, like, taking me along with him. So I was like, hey, look. You got some dating tips, that's yeah, for sure. Definitely right? got some dating tips, you know, <laughs> learned a few things. Learned but did dating. he bring you any, like, girls to come with you so you weren't at the third wheel? I mean, now that makes a little more sense. You know, he, he would ask, <laughs> okay. like, hey, you have a friend for my friend, you know, but didn't work I, out. I, I was shy. I wasn't the best looking at the time. Okay. It, it really never it ended up working out. out that way, no. So, but 
hey, I still had the experiences with him. That was what was most important to me. Absolutely. So him and I get into this relationship. I guess my question to you was, at that time, starting at a very young age, you were a part of me and Francesco's journey, and you and I did not like each other. No. We... I want to dive into it. Um, I, I don't know how I'd say we hated each other. We definitely didn't like each other. I really didn't know a lot about you. I only really knew, and this is the thing, we've spoken mm-hmm. about this a lot. There Go was ahead. a big misconception about who is Kaylin Regan. You know, you had a lot of your life out there on social media. Absolutely. You had always been on social media even before TikTok and everything. And really no one, I would say, that didn't take the time to get to know you actually really knew the person that you are, that the person I know you to be yeah. today. And aside from that, I think there was probably a little bit of jealousy involved. You know, I'm like, the more time, now he's got a girlfriend, he's spending less time with me, yeah. where's my boy, where's Franchella, what's going on? Um, but, you know, a lot of it was based off of things that I thought I knew about you that I really didn't know yeah. because, you know, people talk and oh, and the, the gossip is crazy. And yeah. just, you know, I, I just didn't, I didn't know that you were like a good person, you know, necessarily. You can't even, it's interesting too, because we can't really necessarily say we didn't like each other when yeah. we didn't know each other. I didn't know each other, no. I didn't even take the time to get to know you. And you I don't think you cared to. No, not at the time. Yeah. Regretfully, but. Thank you. You know. As we grew up, as time changed, you know, actually that lasted for quite a while. But, you know, thankfully the, there came our points where we, we didn't get to, to form a close friendship. Do you feel that like not getting to know like your boy's girl? And I think that this is something a lot of people can relate to, like almost put a damper on your friendship a little bit. Yes, you... 100%. Okay. Because he really kind of wanted to bring you everywhere. Like right. he was like, you know, if we're going to go here, we're going to go there. I'm going to bring Caitlin. And then... I didn't really, the I didn't really changed. know, <laughs> like I, sometimes I was like, listen, why can't it just be the boys? For you know sure. what I mean? I didn't understand. But I think that from the very beginning with you guys, he saw a long future with you and he was like, listen, like I see you and my boy, you know, you're close to me. This is my girl. I want her in my life for a long time. I want you guys to have this relationship. He had tried for so many years to like form that relationship. And like, I think that, you know, I can't speak for you, but definitely yeah. for me, I was a little bit hesitant for a long time, you know? Well, I think that everything happens for a reason, and I just want to validate that I don't entirely blame you for feeling the way that you did for me when I was in college. I was out the way that I posted in bathing suits, hanging out with a bunch of people that didn't care about me. I was all over the place, Mm. and I can understand in a way why, you know, maybe for you it was like, eh, you know? And so I think now we have aligned at a much better place where we both matured and I'm just really grateful that it ended in this way. Definitely. So, here we go. Francesco gets sick recently in 2021 because mm-hmm. I know that he's, you know, had the cancer prior. Long time. And he beat it. This time around, he gets very sick. Mm-hmm. My first question to you is, how much of that did you know? You know, he had been calling me like over like the, the months prior kind of giving me updates here and there and he always was like hey i'm going to get my numbers checked i'm going to have this surgery you know i'm going to get you know this treatment so i kind of had an idea of what was going on but Mm. when it really kind of accelerated after you know you guys had that whole uh, trip to mexico and the vlog and all that like i really kind of did get disconnected from how quick things were accelerating you know there was also definitely a sense from him that he didn't really want to open up much about this even the first time when he had cancer, he was very like, hey, like, it's not a big mm. deal. You know, mm. I'm going to beat this. And then when he ultimately did beat it the first time after seeing him lose his hair and go through all these treatments and seeing him like himself again, you know, like strong going to the gym. I also kind of got like desensitized almost to the yeah, idea of cancer. Yeah. I'm like, yo, cancer isn't can't can't be that bad. Like my boy beat it. Like mm. and even when he told me the first time, like, hey, like, you know, I'm in the clear. I don't even know if he used the word remission or maybe he did. But for me, I don't understand the difference. So Absolutely. I'm like, remission means it's gone. Right. You know, like, right. Can't you don't come have back. to worry about this ever yep. again, you know? And I even want questions, like, in the years after, like, why does he have to get these tests? Why is he getting his numbers checked? I mm. thought that this is over. But, you know, I would definitely say that looking back now, I really wasn't as tapped into what was going on as, as I thought I was or as 
enough to get the full picture of what was happening. Do you think it's because you didn't understand, so you didn't think to ask? Or, you know, was it that he was almost, like, holding it from you guys because he didn't want you guys to worry? Look, when I think about it, I think in these sorts of situations, everybody has, like, a a, a piece of the blame. Um, So I definitely think that for him, and I know it came from a place of, I don't want my friends to worry about yeah. me. Like, I want to maintain. He was always this tough, mm. like, role model figure for me. Yep. He didn't want to look weak to any yep. of us. And I know he really didn't want to talk about it. And for me as well, like, I, I definitely was kind of hiding from it or running from it a little bit as well. Like, it was an uncomfortable situation. Like, they say, like, elephant in the room. Mm. And, you know, I just, it was hard for me to talk about. When we would sit together and we would spend time together, I'd go over his house it was not really the thing that we, I think either of us wanted to talk about. We kind of mm. wanted to almost pretend it wasn't happening. And and this is an honest question. Do you think that it was better for you to navigate in a way where what you don't know doesn't bother you? Or do you wish that you asked those questions and you fully understood what was going on? I mean, looking back now, I definitely, I wish at the very least that I had made myself more like available or somebody to talk to because Mm. we never really had these sorts of conversations Mm. about like you know what happens if one day i'm not here Mm. you know and i wish that at least we could have had those conversations just to you know kind of feel like everything all all the bases were covered everything was said that needed to be said and i think that for both of us it was such an uncomfortable conversation we kind of ran from it more than tackling it head on absolutely and there's a little bit of regret there for sure, I wish that there was. There's a lot of things that I wish that I had gotten a chance to say to him, like, a, yeah, you know, how big of an influence he was on me, which mm. I hope that he knew to a certain extent, Definitely. for sure. Definitely. But at the same time, I think that at the time it was like a defense mechanism. Like, I don't really know what our what, what my headspace would have been like, like being fully, fully aware of what mm. was happening. Maybe you couldn't have shown up in the way that you did. Yeah, you know, it's interesting too because I think that. The reason why Francesca would hold back on like telling people so close to them is because it was almost so nice to have an escape to hang out with people that weren't so worried about him. It made mm-hmm. him feel normal. Yeah. You always say as well, he always said to me, he's like, I just want to be normal. That was a big His thing to him. Quote. And I used to tell him, listen, this doesn't really, this doesn't make you abnormal. Yeah. But I understand that like he couldn't have the normal life of a 20 something yeah. year old when this was going on in the background, you know? Yeah. So I reach out to you guys, you and the boys, and I say, hey, you know, when things were getting bad, I think this was like a week and a half prior to his passing, him and I briefly spoke and I said, listen, do your friends understand what's going on here? Because I was thinking a lot about you guys. And I'm like, you know, where are they? I don't think he's communicating. And he said, I really don't want to see anyone. I don't want people to see me like this. And I kind of like went behind his back in a way and I said, I think that they need to see him regardless of what he wants right now. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I'm not sure if that was the right thing to do or not. I know he felt like a little bit like I didn't ask for this, but I think at the same time, it was a sign of relief to Mm -hmm. have you guys there. I mean, there was definitely a few different points where, you know, I remember seeing you at the gym when I was with D'Angelo and you kind of talking to us and kind of me getting the sense that something was off. And then when you called, um, called me an Antonio that one day to come I always remember walking up the steps and like seeing this look on his face of like almost like disappointment or like you guys went behind my back when, he, when you, to... you guys came yeah after like, the text because yeah because you sent me this text and said hey you guys need to come over and just just be here with I him. wanted you guys to talk yeah and yeah we talked I mean he... well that's what we're getting into now what was that conversation that you two had I want to say for sure that was probably like the last serious conversation that we ended up having. And I think that he kind of wanted to say everything to me. I, I, it was almost like him giving me like his last piece. Was that the last conversation that you guys I had? I mean, we had conversations after that, but like he really was like in so much pain and like the medicine that he was taking for that pain. Like he was so out of it, like in, in and out of consciousness so when we spoke. Like so really this was the last, last like conversation I would say indulged. I had with Francesco, you know? Perfect. And he really just... For me and Antonio, for both of us, he he really gave it to us. Like, Mm. I remember him saying to me specifically, he was like, hey, bro, like, you're a loser. Mm. And, you know, at the time, I remember kind of being like, whoa, like, where is this coming from? But 
you know, everything that he said, he had a point. He said, you know, you're working this job that doesn't make you happy that you always call me to complain about. You're chasing this girl this in this old relationship that doesn't really seem like she cares enough about you as much, especially not as much as you do. Mm. And you deserve better. You know, you're not putting yourself out there, even though you want to be out there. You want to talk to people. You want to go out and have these experiences, oh. but you're scared to. And in, even with the gym, like, hey, you, you're just not going for no reason, even though you want to, like go to the gym and have a nice body like you're just letting your fears hold you back and it was it was everything that kind of i subconsciously knew Mm. but needed to hear Mm. and especially hearing it from him in that state and like you know what would end up happening it's a conversation that i hold very close to myself and something that i have made sure and continue to make sure i am trying to make him proud yeah pretty much do you feel like in that moment that he was like laying it out for you was it like uh, upsetting you or were you like wow i needed this honestly like in the moment i remember it being a bit of both okay like it was upsetting me that he was having this conversation with me it kind of hurt to like hear that from like your best friend but it was like hey like sometimes you need to hear the the hard truth yeah. you know like i would say that that conversation i'll never forget it and it's changed the way that i live my life ever since i've i've had it I'm so happy to hear that because I'm just so grateful that you guys came that day and got to just be there, you know. And I think that he was as well deep down. And mm-hmm. I think that for him, being able to get that off his chest and, and have that opportunity to tell you what he wanted you to know. Because mm-hmm. I think I talk about this a lot in my podcast, but he knew way earlier than the rest of us that he wasn't going to be here much longer. So the way that he was talking to everybody was very like, hey... I'm probably not going to see you again. Mm. Like, this is what you need to know. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just very... And even though he knew it at the time, we, we really didn't. You yeah. know, and that's why I think it hurt at, it. at the time. But now reflecting, looking back, it's yep. like it Always. didn't come from a bad place. Mm-mm. Not at all. So he passes away. Where were you that day? How did you find out? That day I was at work. I specifically remember... That, you know, usually I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to run out of work because it's like so tiring. Okay. It's an annoying day. Like okay. this was in the, the old job I was working. And I remember that this day specifically was, was actually like a good day. Like I remember taking my time to get out of the office. I remember like smiling, laughing. And, um, all of a sudden I get a call from my friend, from our friend Antonio. Okay. And I remember when I got this call, like for some reason I didn't feel like it was for a good reason. I got this like feeling and hmm. like the pit of my stomach oddly enough because he knew i was at work and he wouldn't usually call me at these times okay. uh so i answer and i'm like hey what's what's going on antonio and he's just like very quiet on the other side very like i guess the word is like sullen like he's like sounds sad and he's like bro like you know he's having a hard time getting the words out and at the time in that moment it was like very frustrating for me to you know with all the context of everything that was happening and to hear him so sad i was like just just spit it out like what's going on you know and and he tells me he's like i I think that i think that chesco passed away and i remember like instantly just kind of being like in a state of panic almost like what are you talking about like there's no way oh my god like like my heart like stopped like honestly like Mm -hmm. i remember i was walking out of the elevator walking to the bus stop and like on the phone and like i felt like i couldn't like breathe Mm -hmm. like you know like i was very short of breath and I told him, like, listen, like, I need to get, I need to get home. Like, I'm going to get on the bus. I'm, I'm going to meet up with you guys and figure out what's going on. Mm. So parts and of you were, wasn't even accepting it. I don't think I fully was, like, processing what I was hearing. Okay. You know? Until when, when I got on the bus, like, my first instinct was, like, to call my dad. Because my dad also had a close relationship with Wouldn't Francesco yeah. for a long time. And as soon as I call him, he's like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't know how to tell you this. And he's like... The same same reaction as me. Like, what are you talking about? Like, spit it. What are you mm. saying? And like, I remember like as I'm saying it to him, like, like the tears rolling down my face, like not being able to contain it. Like, you know, when you're like kind of like hyperventilating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just I told him I was like I I don't think like an Italian because I didn't want to. It's on the Stay bus on the and bus. it felt just odd to say mm-hmm. it out loud. But I was like, you know, I don't think Francesco was here anymore. You know, I didn't know how else to really put it. Mm-hmm. And I think that there's a difference between like receiving information mm. and then having to like give, give the mm-hmm. information to somebody because having, I, I think that I wasn't really fully processing what I was being told. But when I had to tell my dad, I was mm. like, these words, the words that are coming out of my mouth, like I, I now am processing mm. them and being like, holy crap. Like, 
this is re- this is really happening, you know? Do you think that like psychologically you made that phone call for that reason? Or was it more like I need someone to talk yeah, to? Yeah, it was like a call for help. It was like okay. it was like I need to talk to somebody like and get my emotions out. So maybe you're right. Maybe I I did want to kind of like slap myself in the face and be like, "Hey, like but you got to process what you just heard." Yeah. I do even remember like I got home, um got in my like ended up going to get my car, met up with everybody. We went to sit by the water. We didn't have words to say, you yeah. know? And I'll always remember that I think subconsciously in the back of my head, I was having a hard time like truly processing it or like accepting it. I don't think I fully accepted it until I was sitting in the car. And I remember you sent a text. We all got at the same time mm-hmm. to kind of all his friends, I think his cousins as well. And just very bluntly said, you know, I like, sent hey it? guys, yes, you sent this text okay. and very bluntly just said, hey guys, like, which also passed away this afternoon and you know this whole thing and you know when i read those words was the first time in my head that i was like wow like this is caitlin this is the love of his life his girlfriend she's in the house with him and like this is like the facts like this is true you know i have to accept this now because it's one thing to hear it from friends that are all just hearing from a person from a person it's another thing to hear it from somebody who you know is like next to him Hmm. and who ultimately i found out is the one who was the first one to know that he had passed so you come over to the house and this was the first time you and I had our first kind of real encounter because like I said, we really never spoke like that. Well, we, we did end up getting close kind of in like months prior to true, it. True, your breakup. That's true. I'm glad you brought that up. But that was really, I, I remember coming to the house and I remember even before coming to the house, it felt so odd because I had been by his side like through everything mm. you know if there was a family event a birthday a this a that like i was with him he made sure i was coming with him for for many years of his life and it felt so weird because suddenly without him there i felt so out of place like i felt like i didn't really belong in the car like i wanted to be in the house with his family but like at the same time i also didn't really feel like i belonged there either and it was just this really big sense of like feeling alone mm. in the universe like who where am i yeah like, where do i fit in? who am i you know yeah. and like I do remember ultimately you or, or his cousin Johnny, somebody said like, hey, come over. It's okay to come over to the house now. Like I remember at first they were like, listen, like we should wait a little bit. And I remember walking into the house and the two main people that I wanted to, to just give like a big hug, just be their comfort was his mother and you. Because I was like, you know, um, the, um, they always say a mother's love. And then like there's also the love of somebody that you were going to spend the rest of your life with, you know. And I remember it was very, very, very hard on all of us. But I remember you specifically, like, seeing you and you almost seemed like, I I think I told you this in in the past, you seemed, like, chipper. Like, you seemed like you were okay. I remember, like, being like, hey, Kayla, you were like, hey, how are you, you know? And I'm just like, you're asking me how I am, you know? Like, and I remember looking at your eyes and it was just, like, like, blank stare. Mm -hmm. Like, there was, your mind was just, like, blank. And I was like, whoa, like this girl is messed up right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like you wouldn't know from the outside, like you wouldn't be able to tell because of how you were coming off. Yeah. You were coming off like you were put together and okay, but I I could tell that inside you were not. Yeah. At all. Well, do you have like um, any more specifics of how you could tell that I was so deeply not okay for like maybe people to like look out for to see if people around them are okay? Because I, I'm not the only one that plays this part so well. Look, I would just say that it was, for me, it was a bit of, like, common sense. I'm like, th- you know, this girl is hurting so bad. Like, she just lost the love of her life. And, like, she's seemingly okay. Like, mm-hmm. no. That's, that's, something's wrong here. Because this is not, this is not, po- like, either you're a sociopath or, like, you're really <laughs> fucked up. You know? Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, whatever I knew about you or whatever I thought about you, the misconceptions, like, I knew you weren't a horrible person like that. So, When I saw you, like, seeming okay, I was like, oh, this girl is even more messed up than we could ever imagine, Mm. you know? The very interesting thing about you is not only were you grieving a best friend, but you were also going through a breakup, which we kind of touched on a couple seconds ago. For me, I feel like breakups are a sense of grief. Yeah, it's a form of grief. Form of grief. Because you're no longer, that person's no longer in your life. Mm. The future that you saw with them is no longer going to happen. Yeah. So you're 
grieving like all these different aspects that you've lost you're grieving the relationship you had and the relationship that you were hoping to have or could have had correct somewhere along in the mix also losing my grandmother as well mm-hmm. so it was very it was a very difficult past months mm. going into that for sure and the reason why i'm bringing this up more than ever is because you were at my house right after francesco passed all the boys came here we spent the first week at my house playing board games and kind of trying to distract ourselves mm. and i saw you we were all hanging out and you were very upset and all the boys were like, what's wrong, Mirko? Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, just like breakup shit. And everybody's like, just get over it. Come on, bro. It's not worth it. Just get over it. Mm-hmm. And I'm listening to like everybody speak. And I'm like, who's going to tell him that he just can't just get over it? Mm-hmm. Who's going to sit down with him and let him talk this through? Because I don't really think that's what he wants to hear right yeah. now. I definitely felt very misunderstood because I felt like, Everybody's telling me, you know, just get over it, just mm. get over it. And I, like, really couldn't. Mm. And I felt Fair. like, I, I, I just felt like if they're telling me just get over it and I can't, like, there's something wrong with me. Like, you know, like. And that is the problem with telling someone to just get over it. Mm. Because it makes you feel like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And it takes time. It takes yeah. healing. It takes steps. And, and, How? And just to, to say as well. I mean, it was something that I was dealing with for a long time. Like, you know, yeah. th- breakups sometimes take long time, Let's especially when it. it's when it's one-sided. Absolutely. For sure, it was definitely more one-sided of me grieving the relationship, for sure. And to be honest, even you and me, that's where our friendship first, you know, started. started. Because when I was, when I first had this breakup, Francesco was still, you know, he was sick, but he was, he was still doing okay. And I remember him really helping me through this as well. And I remember him recognizing at a certain point, like, hey, like, I'm trying to help you here, but you're having a hard time, like, taking in what I'm telling you. Why don't you sit and talk with Caitlin about this? Because maybe you're, like, more receptive to this from a woman or somebody who's not that close to you, Mm. you know, an outsider perspective. And I remember, you know, being skeptical, but being like, hey, like, I I want to, I don't want to feel like this. So... I remember sitting down with you and talking about this and you asking me like what's going on and at the time I was doing all of the crazy like just got out of a relationship things like checking her social media checking if she followed anybody you know like checking her pictures uh, up until the points where I had her location checking her location Mm -hmm. texting her many points throughout the day Mm -hmm. like being kind of like crazy Mm -hmm. because I think that when somebody breaks up with you and you're not ready to get out of that relationship you're kind of left feeling like not good enough. Yeah. You lose kind of a certain sense of worth. Mm-hmm. And I was fighting so hard to like get that back. And mm. I think a lot of like the advice that you gave me really did help. Like, you know, like it helped me kind of like distance myself from, from that relationship at the time. I ended up getting a job, starting to go to the gym a little bit. Like I was kind of doing better. And then with months passing, losing my grandmother and then a, uh, after losing for trustful, like it was, it was really, it really let the floodgates open up. And I was so emotional and looking for somebody to talk to. Mm. And I think more than anything, especially with my guy friends, not Mm -hmm. really, you know, you don't talk to your boys about like a breakup. They're just like, like you said, kind of get over it. Like, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but really not normalized for men to, and you can correct me if you feel I'm wrong here. Like be emotional. No, it's not. It's it's like weird for you guys to do. It's, it's, People don't think that you should, but I, I think that honestly you have to sometimes. I agree. And I just do remember that even with all the advice you give gave me and you know all the healing that I had done when Francesco passed away, like it was I was almost back to square one. Yeah. You know I was reaching out to her, wanting somebody to talk to, Looking wanting for comfort. wanting some like a comfort from like that that almost like only a woman can give you. You know like, and at the time it was definitely not the best thing for me because. I think that I convinced myself that I was really looking for like a friendship mm. out of her. Mm. And the truth was that I wanted somebody to be there for me and she wasn't. You wanted just what every other human wants in this world. What they can't have. Pretty much, yeah. This person was saying, hey Mirko, I don't want to be with you anymore. Mm-hmm. And you were saying without realizing what I do, so let's do it. Yeah. And you were fighting for something That the other person did not want. And I remember you saying to me and going back to that moment in the basement where we were all playing those board games. You were saying like, you know, 
what do I do, Caitlin? Like, she doesn't want me. I said, mm. all that miss, that love that you want to give to her, we need to locate that, find it, and give it to yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It's like that quote that I told you. When you love somebody so much and they pass away, you have all this love and they say, you know, grief is love with nowhere mm-hmm. to go. But the quote that I told you was grief is love with everywhere to go. Yeah, I love because when you have that love, it doesn't need to just die. Yeah. You yeah. can give that love to that person's loved ones, other loved ones, you know, yourself, Some, yourself is really where that love should go. When you have all this love to give and you want to give it to all the wrong people, which is what I did. I mm. misplaced it and tried to give it to someone mm. who didn't want it from mm. me. I should have really been focusing on giving it to myself, you know, and working on myself, bettering myself. And I really remember you kind of taking me to the side and being like, hey, look, your friends are not really giving you the best advice. You can't just get over it. Let's sit down and try and understand this. Mm. And we sat down, talked about it, Mm. talked about like what it was I missed out of her Mm -hmm. and this and that. And you told me like, look, what do you want to do out of this? Mm -hmm. And I said, at this point right now, I think I want to get back together with her. And you said, look, if you want to get back together with her. You need to take the time and leave her alone. Like you're crossing her boundaries. She told you to leave her alone. She's not interested in you right now. Work on yourself. Better yourself. And as you're bettering yourself and giving her that space, like if she, if it's really meant to be, if she really wants you, she, she will come back. You know, and I, you know, similar you advice me. even that Francesco gave me, yep. you know, and said that like, hey, like with, with you there was like, yo, she's right. And it was like ended up being like almost a year later when I really fully took that advice that you gave me. And, and once you did, lo and behold, got that text back from her. You got a text months that said later, what? Months later, months later, text back saying, hey, like, I really want to try and make this work. And I even remember you telling me, like, hey, look, when you get this text miracle, like, the ball is going to be in your court. It's yeah. your decision. What do you want to do yep. with it? You know, like, mm-hmm. you, you feel so, like, out of control in this situation. Take the control back. And then when I when I got that text, I think that you were even expecting me to just, like, hey, like, this is what I he wanted. I want to go back. Yeah. Yeah. And like when I really oh, sat with it, so I was like, beautiful moment. I'm doing so much like working on myself, going to the gym, like trying to really do the things that make me happy, trying to do the things that make Francesco happy. And like, I just don't know that this is what's right for me. And I don't know that, um, I don't know that I'm willing to like give myself up to any person, yeah. especially not the same person that hurt me the first time again. And I, she was very like, is there somebody else? Is this a situation? And you know, I, whether she believed me or not, or not, I think sometimes people need to understand that, like, sometimes the somebody else is yourself. Yep. Period. That's just that simple. And I told you, too, I said, when you get that text, you're going to be, you will make the decision where you say, you know what? I worked on myself. I'm ready to go back into that relationship. And that's validated. Or, you know what? What I realized now that it's been a year and this person finally came back, I don't really want this anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not only do I not want this anymore. I'm not confident that I ever really did after she broke up with me the first time because I was fighting so hard wanting something that I couldn't have and that's why I was fighting for it, not because it was what was right for me. And it wasn't. And the only way you'd be able to determine that is by taking time for yourself. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly what I did. And you did that. Yeah. And I'm so proud of you. I've been able to do it without you. I really, no, I really am Mm -hmm. because now... Mirko, you just came such a long way and it's just such an Thank honor you. to be on that journey with you for yeah, that. It was it was a lot of it was advice that you gave me, having somebody to like grieve through this process with. Ugh. And I think that in a lot of ways, like the comfort, the friendship that I that I was in some ways looking for from her, like I ended up getting it from you and I, it wasn't and this yourself. person that I wanted true, but I was like it wasn't this person that I wanted, it was just this friendship to to be able yeah. to have somebody to talk to. Yeah. You know. And you know, again, you were going through this breakup in the mix of grieving your best friend, of Francesco. Course. Would you say that there was like a correlation to oh, yeah. all of that? Like how, just dealing with it all at once, like how, how would you say that was all like? I felt like so alone and like I needed somebody to talk to. And, you know, we had, me and her, my ex had maintained like a friendship of like talking here and there. Do you recommend that? Honestly, genuine question. Not really, really. not okay. really, because... There was, like, as long as I could talk to her, there was no real, like, healing that happened until, like, I Mm. took myself away from that and Mm -hmm. focused on myself. That was when the healing started, Mm. and that was when the the feelings really went away. Wow. Do you think that the the man that was stalking her profiles, the man that was, you know, stalking locations, whatever it was that you were doing in that time, 
would ever believe that you are where you are now getting a text from her and saying hey i don't want this no no i definitely i I was down bad and i it feels like when you're in those places you can't get out of it Mm -hmm. but like the only way to get out of it is to start doing things for you yourself so fucking proud of you so now i want to kind of go into another thing that happened with mirko and i This was something that I really struggled with, so I'll speak on it first. In the middle of my grieving process, there was a time where I was really lacking that love of my life. Lacking, like, that boyfriend. Like, I felt it tremendously. Like, just that that whole... That void. That whole void. And Mirko reminds me a lot of francesco a lot of his boys do i mean you guys are all each other like that's what friends are all like a piece of him i believe and especially you more than ever the right hand man so i really enjoyed having you around because it made me feel like it was him right Mm -hmm. there was a point in time where i almost could say i lost track that it wasn't him Mm -hmm. like i was looking at you but i was looking at him right and at first i was like oh this feels good like i'm good and then i was like wait this is kind of dangerous because it's you're not him and there was a a a time the story is very intense we were on the roof and we were working on getting this podcast started which Mm -hmm. miracle is behind the whole project and has helped me tremendously Mm -hmm. with just getting myself to find the strength to do this so we're sitting on the roof and working and he's talking to me and i'm looking at him i kid you not I could swear I'm looking at Francesco and I went to go and kiss him. I didn't kiss him, but I I stopped myself. He didn't know what was going on. I was like, oh, like, you got to go home. And I didn't tell him why. I just, like, kind of, like, kicked him out of the house. And I, like, went home. I went upstairs and I sat in my room. I'm like, what is wrong with me? What's going on? And I was like, I can't tell him that I almost just kissed him because he's going to think I'm a fucking weirdo for saying, hey, I almost kissed you because I thought... You were Francesco, but I did the right thing. I ended up communicating with Miracle the next day. I had him come over and I explained to him what I was struggling with, which is like, hey, it's a beautiful thing that you remind me of this person, but I am struggling with this, right? The friendship, the healing. And to just put it in there, like I think that it was a difficult situation to be in because you and me were such a big part of each other's like healing process. So there was definitely a point that I was like, hey, I don't know that I am going to be okay and be able to continue moving forward healing without without you. Yeah. And, you know, and it, was, it was a difficult situation, but I remember telling you, like, ultimately, like, look, whatever you think is really, mm-hmm. like, you need best to. for you, if yeah. you need, like, the space, like, if being around me is difficult because I remind you of him, we don't have to go to the gym together as much. Yep. We don't have to... You know, I can work on certain things for the podcast, you know, remotely yep. because at the end of the day, I was like, we don't both need to be struggling with our healing process. You know, if, if I need to struggle a little bit more to have you be more at peace, then I was willing to do that. And I think that a lot of it, when you broke it down with me and when we had that conversation made sense in the aspect that, you know, I, I spent so many years of my life with him. You know, I, I modeled the person that I was in a lot of ways, maybe subconsciously after him. Yeah. And I mean, he loved that in a lot of ways. Yeah. He was like my role model. I was like his protege, you know, he was like, yeah. Hey, like you should dress like this, this style, you know, music that I should listen to ways yeah. to talk to girls, you yeah. know, respect how to respect people. Yeah. Like I learned so many things from him and tried to be like him in so many ways that yeah. I, I understand the similarities. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure that in some ways, like there was pieces of me that, became pieces of him and there was so many pieces of him that became pieces of me well thank you so much for being gentle with me about it and mm-hmm. like all you had to do was just say you know what Kaylin, i'm listening to you i'm sorry you're struggling with this i'm willing to do what it takes to help and that's all i needed was for someone to say it's okay and we'll, we'll work through this and we'll figure it out because it's it's not okay to you know put all that i'm missing on francesco on you yeah because you know and i think that in a friendship it's very important for any friendship, for anybody that even dealing with a similar situation mm. or a completely different situation, like communication is very important because when you're not straight up with so somebody and you're hiding things, like if you feel it comes off disingenuous, it's hard to Absolutely. have a close friendship. And I think if anything, like being able to 
have that situation and and get through that situation made our friendship even closer. Absolutely. I felt like I can confide in you, trust you, no matter what I'm going through, you're not judging me. I mean, Mm. these are things that us humans need, like, to be close to somebody. You definitely felt like, you know, when I tell him this, like, he's going to go run away. Oh, yeah, I thought you would never come back. But if anything, it was more of a, like, just seeing how messed up you were mentally, you know? I remember I, I told you this as well, like, you know, the first real time that it clicked for me after that seeing you at the house that day mm-hmm. was, you know, seeing you at the wake and like seeing you like leaning over his body, mm-hmm. you know, and seeing this line of people behind you and realizing like, wow, like she's having a hard time getting up, you yeah. know, and all along this whole process, I realized like, okay, like this person, people don't really realize it, but needs a little bit yeah. of an extra push. And even when the situation came up with with us, I was like, the last thing I'm going to do is turn my back on her and be like, this is kind of weird. This is an uncomfortable situation yeah. for me. Like, you're on your own. Like, right. You know, I, I was like, listen, I got you. And I'll do we'll work through this. And that's all I takes. needed. Yeah. And we ended up working through it. And we chose to obviously really find and master helping me not feel like you're him, but still get that comfort of feeling like you are a part of him. We yeah. all are. You we know? all are. You are as well. You, you even, and I've told you this. You remind me in certain ways, even as a woman, remind me in certain ways of him in so much because you spend so much time with somebody. You pick up their habits. You pick up their, like, way of speaking and, like, their almost energy, you yeah. know? Because like, energy, they say, is contagious. Like, yeah. we are, we're all kind of, like, a, a piece of him. And Absolutely. Well, I find comfort in Mirko now as a friend, but I can understand why people and i've read so many stories i've done my research because i was like what's wrong with me google articles google articles of like people like in 9 11 for example lost husbands and they ended up dating their brother or their best friends i understand why these things happen Mm -hmm. because the people that were so closest to the person that you lost remind you so much of them and there's so much comfort there they understand you i can see why And I just wanted to talk so vulnerable about this situation because for so long, and we didn't even proceed with anything. Mm -hmm. That's the craziest part. But for so long, I even shamed being in that such weak position of feeling that way. And I almost want to normalize that even if we decided to pursue or anyone in the future did, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I don't want these things to be shamed. Yeah, and I think that... I think that it was like that. It was a lot of like, what's wrong with us? Like, what's going on? Absolutely. Like, but, you know, doing the research, looking into Google and because my thing is whenever I, there's a situation that I don't know or there's a problem I'm trying to solve, yeah. something, you know, that You're I'm trying looking to fix, it up. I'm looking it up on yeah. Google. Like, hey, like, has anybody else been through this? Like, what's, yep. the, what's the spiel? And there was actually a lot, a of, lot. Of, of people saying like that they had gone through like similar things with like a friend, a brother. Yep. And... I think that seeing that we weren't alone, seeing that this was something that happens, made us feel a lot more like okay with it and like okay able with to like work through it. able to work through it. Like this, yep. this is not like we're not crazy. This is normal, and we just have to find a way to like work through it and maintain the friendship. And we did, yeah. you know, in a beautiful way. And guess why? Communication. That's 100%. it. Hey, Kaylin, how are you doing today? Is there anything I can do to help? Just checking in on a situation we spoke about. Is there anything that you need? Yeah. Like. And I think that it's Check very... Check I mean, come on. Perfect. It's very symbolic of, like, the type of friendship that we have because along this whole process from the very beginning when Francesco passed, this was so hard on us and there was a lot of people that kind of wanted to, like, repress the feelings, mm. avoid it, you know, and be like, hey, like, this happened, this sucks, but, like, let's move on from it. Yep. And I think you and me were really like, hey, like, we can't just move on. No. From it. Similar to the relationship thing yep. that I was dealing with, you can't just move on. No. From it. You have to heal from it. And to heal from it, you have to really sit down, understand what understand. happened, understand how it made you feel. And you and me were very forward with like, hey, very. like we need to tackle this head on. Yep. You know? And that's and exactly what we did. That's exactly what we did. And, you know, would I say that I am 100% healed or that either of us are 100% healed from this? No. Like we have scars that we will hold on to forever. But I would say that at this point now, like I could sit and watch like a video of him and be like, okay. You know, whereas... Yeah. For a while, I couldn't, yeah. you know, and for and, and the the turning point for me was really like, hey, like, I'm forgetting what his voice sounds like. Yeah. I'm forgetting what he, like, looks like, yeah. you know, and I didn't want that to happen. I, I, you know, thankfully, we have videos that we're able to go back and look at, but, like, if, if it's only been a year and I'm already forgetting his voice, what's going to happen with time right. if I don't, like, focus on these things? Right. And I think that really the thing that was, like, the catalyst for us really facing this was 
working on this podcast. Yeah. And, God. you know, especially the first episode, March 21st, like really sitting there and like for you expressing what it was like to go through this and putting yourself back in that place. And for me, kind of getting insight on a place that I hadn't been, like getting right. insight on like, this is what this day was like. Like we, it really made and me face like... And it made you like, even think, well, what was that day like for, for me? me? And yeah, like, you... Yeah. It really put me back in that place. And then even going back from there, going the past months, I was like, what was going on in my head? Trying to really analyze and, and, and reassess what well, what was I thinking at those times? What was I feeling yeah. at those times, you know? And, and when you understand, well, and you really like evaluate yourself, when you look back and it's all clarity, I mean, it's so much easier to say like, okay, I can actually like keep walking forward now mm -hmm. because I understand what's behind me. Mm -hmm. I am just... So blessed to have you a part of this journey. Um, he is like, what are you, the executive producer, creative the director, <laughs> editor, sound engineer? Listen, you 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 need it. I got it. There That's you it. go. He's a man of all trades. Mm -hmm. But um, one day you are going to be an amazing partner. You're an amazing person. I can't Thank wait you. to just keep watching you evolve into the person you're meant to be. You too. And I'm just so excited to be on this journey with you. Of course. So. Thank you for being on this episode. Thank you for having me. Of course, and being a part of this project, and I fucking love you. And I will continue to be a part of this project. Let's talk is only going up from here. There you go.